also talk about test automation with uh, Java and uh, Docker. And uh, uh, yeah, I that. my name is Joachim Verona. I've been working with system development since uh, 1994. Since uh, 2003, uh, some whereabouts there anyway, I've been working with uh, configuration management, continuous integration, continuous deployment, DevOps, that sort of thing. In my brain, they're all the same thing. So, um, well, as the saying goes in Sweden, shared one, hard one of them. This presentation will be uh, start out with very fluffy clouds, so called uh, style, and uh, will progress uh, until uh, more concrete uh, implementation de details and stuff like that. Also, uh, I would like you to uh, ask questions, otherwise, they will. So, um, plenty of questions. Thank you. So, uh, test automation is uh, really a part of continuous delivery. And it's a very important part, I think. And uh, this is a book that uh, describes the field, and I think it's a pretty good book. It's Continuous Delivery by Jess Humble and David Fairley. And uh, they define continuous delivery as uh, reliable software releases through build, test, and deployment automation. So you see, it's right there in the description, test. And this is um, a picture describing a continuous delivery pipeline. And it's a um, picture that I work with uh, customers a lot. It's different from uh, for different customers, of course, but more or less similar. You have the uh, development teams to the left. You have uh, various uh, machinery in the middle, conversion, uh, Git repositories, uh, binary artifact repositories, continuous integration machines. Then uh, we have uh, integration staging, performance testing environments, and uh, at the end we have uh, production systems. And at the very end we have uh, this guy with the dollar signs, it's our customer. And uh, obviously it's important that he gets his hand on our code as fast as possible so he can give us the money, so to speak. So that's uh, why this needs to be passed. And uh, how fast is fast? According to uh, the uh, Andre Feli book, continuous, continuous delivery book, it's, uh, well, depending on, on uh, the cycle, but 10 minutes, something. <coughs> and um, in my experience, I have an, uh, another name for this, and it's called the short attention span rule. So if something is so slow or boring that we start having YouTube movies of robots shooting down uh, balloons on our screen, then it's too slow. So, well, uh, how many of you have it? No, you're super uh, great people. You are so focused. You, you must tell me how you do it. Um, and also, here's um, the different types of agile cycles because we are all working in different types of agile environments here, right? We're all super agile. And uh, uh, at the outmost wheel, so to speak, we have the portfolio cycle that's very slow, but it might be years. Uh, inside that, we have the scrum cycle that might be weeks. Inside of that, we have the Kanban cycle, that's 24 hours, normally. And um, inside is my favorite cycle, it's 
the edit compile debug cycle that's not normally spoken about in these types of circumstances. And uh, across everything, you have test automation that helps do this more efficiently. And uh, I've, I've drawn this as uh, a set of wheels within wheels. Um, and it's, it makes it kind of obvious if one of these cycles aren't efficient enough, then the other cycles can't be efficient either. So that, uh, that's part of the motivation. And uh, what's the payoff? If you do test automation well, we do also continuous delivery well. And uh, if we do that, then we have uh, everything gets faster, cheaper, and <coughs> yes. So that was the fluffy part. Do, do you have uh, any opinions on uh, Super detailed guy, guys, and you're waiting for the details. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'm going to talk about a concrete <coughs> application here to exemplify how we can work with test automation and uh, virtual test clusters and stuff. <coughs> and I have, uh, uh, it's called uh, CPR. I know some of you here, I recognize a couple of faces, uh, now this application. But it's, um, it's a very uh, simple application um, from a GUI standpoint, but it's a very complex application from an integration standpoint, because it uh, provides many SOAP endpoints and it has lots of consumers. And that also makes it difficult to upgrade it because uh, there are so many problems <coughs> and it needs to be rock solid when it's released. Also, we need to do a uh, JBoss 6 to, to JBoss 8 migration. And you're saying, I hear you saying JBoss 6. That's really old and it, and it is. So uh, that, that uh, provides some difficulties in migration. This is what it looks like, so it's not super sexy at all. It's a uh, simple uh, HTML front end to a uh, typical, uh, um, typical uh, prod interface, backend, database backends, and so on. So, so the, the user interface is nothing special. So, I'll uh, do a little jump to talking about uh, Docker. Because we are using Docker to, to, uh, to create a test environment. And uh, what is Docker? <coughs> Docker then? It's a virtual virtualization technique built, built on uh, LXC containers. So it's a proven technology because LXC, which means lightweight containers, is proven. And Docker bundles things together in a very convenient way, but the components aren't new as such. And uh, another thing that is an integral part of Docker is working with uh, a layered file system. Union FS, which works a little bit like it, but it's a file system, so it's special. Then, uh, apart from that, you also have virtual networking, so you can um, contain, or rather, you can uh, connect containers <coughs> together in a virtual network, which is very useful. Then, to um, tie the SAC together, so to, so to speak, you have the, the Docker file, which is a uh, declarative instruction how to create the Docker files. And uh, 
It's a little bit like a maybe description in that it's declarative and um, it's easy for you. All of this is very efficient. And that's really a new thing because we could do all the things we could have could do with Docker. We could do that previously with other types of virtualization. But um, what Docker adds is making all of this convenient and fast. So therefore we can avoid the shortest attention span rule. Also what we get with uh, Docker is portable across machines. As far as it does anyway if you're using Linux operating systems. You also have versioning. And that's a little bit like it. We can version slices and uh, uh, refer to them with uh, hashes, just like you can refer to commits in Git. So you can also use reusable containers. So you can base your work on other containers. This is very important, important because you also have a public registry where you have lots of uh, available containers already made for you that you can base your own work on. Or, and, okay, so that's a lot of things that Docker is. Uh, how many of you are using Docker, by the way? Well, a couple. That's great. So, uh, Docker isn't really a virtual machine. Instead, it works together with virtual machine technology. So, so if you're using Docker on Windows, for instance, then you can have uh, you can run that Docker inside a virtual box on uh, Windows. And I think that's the way it works on uh, the Mac as well. I see some people nodding, so that's true. So, that is, of course, it's, it's better to. So how do you use Docker? Well, first of all, you write a Docker file. Then you build your uh, Docker image from the Docker file. And then you run the image. Super simple. Okay, so, uh, but that's not <coughs> really uh, more than what you can do, do with virtual box, right? It's a little bit more convenient. Uh, the really interesting part is when you are able to connect many different Docker containers together in a virtual cluster. This is very useful when you are doing complex integration and testing. So you can have your own database, production like database, and uh, other types of, of I mean, production like data images and stuff running on your local machine. And that's what makes it really nice. And uh, this is uh, also very interesting because you can potentially deploy the same image all the way from your private machines to production. And we're not doing that at the moment, but it, it would be entirely feasible. Then you have the advantage that your image is completely tested locally on your development environment, and it would be the same image that is running in production. production. Um, as I said, we are not doing this, but uh, some people are. <coughs> so if you're not, you're missing out. Anyway, and uh, the link flag I provided, provided there, it's, it's, the, it's the thing that bonds the containers together. You will see plenty of code examples soon. So I, I will show you. Then, so that was the, the Docker part. But then you have the uh, testing framework part, because of course you need something to automate the testing with, and uh, we're using uh, Cucumber for uh, automated acceptance <coughs> testing. And uh, Cucumber, how many of you have heard of Cucumber? Oh, all of you, that's great. So the 
melatonin and probably no more than me. Uh, they call this behavior driven development. And I don't know. It sounds like a buzzword to, to me, but it's kind of nice anyway that you can uh, decode that describes uh, acceptance tests also contain the human readable language for the test. So we use Qcamper for the human readable part to execute uh, concrete tests with uh, Selenium, which is the, the uh, web testing framework. And I think all of you are using it, right? Then we are using uh, also SOAP UI to uh, provide the testing framework for the SOAP backends. This is how, uh, sort of how the, um, testing uh, virtual cluster <coughs> looks like. So we have a, a, a tiny Oracle <coughs> server running in a Docker container with um, test data, which is production-like but smaller. Then we have uh, a separate wildfly container, for instance. Labels eight container, and uh, we start them up on uh, any sort of machine really, and we tie them together virtually, and we are able to uh, use our automated <coughs> testing suite with uh, this uh, automated, um, I mean this uh, testing stack, and it works pretty well actually in practice. Also, with Docker, is that it's so lightweight, so it doesn't really add much to uh, the environment. Oracle is very heavyweight, of course, but it's still possible to, to run it on a, a development machine. But Wildfly is pretty fast and uh, lightweight. And uh, Docker makes it so that the requirements aren't much greater than they are for. The application running um, standalone. Uh, there's not mu much overhead added. Not the same as you do. With. So, how much time does it take for you to start it all up, run all the tests, and just shut down the whole time? Yeah, about 10 minutes. So, um, no, it's faster. It's faster. It's, it's about uh, 5 6 minutes. That's no, uh, that's on a well, ordinary machine, nothing special. How much light is actually text execution time? Okay, so how much of that is actually test execution time? That's a good question. Um, I mean, it takes uh, the Oracle something like a minute to to boot, I think, and then it takes. Uh, Wildfly is pretty fast, so I would say the rest of it is uh, testing time. But that's also because much of it is uh, automated uh, GUI testing and it has to, to wait for the uh, uh, responses and so on in, in uh, the GUI. So that I adds a lot of time to the tests. I, I mean, I think it's shorter in CPU. cheated a little bit so uh, where you can uh, commit uh, the schemas to uh, the image so uh, we're uh, we're starting in an, in a known state but it's contained within the image but it's um, it's the state before um, conversion because we, uh, this upgrade that we are testing um, changes the data so we bring up the containers things are more convenient for the testers. This is uh, what this one is, uh, I mean, this is an excerpt from our QCamper test, so 
Um, and they are in Swedish actually. So, <coughs> so when we added a place, then we do stuff with Selenium, checking the things, and um, then we control it with uh, an assertion. So the cucumber layer adds really only some uh, human readable description. I think it uh, gave us uh, less than we hoped for because uh, I mean the, the selenium tests are working great but uh, for some reason our acceptance testers are not really, they are not embracing this super technology that we are. so we are a bit sad but it works, uh, the te techniques work very well but uh, as always there is uh, more to this than just machines, they're also humans. So, um, <coughs> business value for, for us then. This took uh, about uh, three, three people, about one calendar month, and we were able to work in parallel. I did most of the Docker things, and uh, we had two testers working on the SOAP UI parts and the uh, cucumber selenium parts and uh, I think that's what we had a really good payoff for this because we were able to uh, to remove, remove lots of uh, testing and we were able to, to work for go from weeks of deployment time to really be able to show changes uh, to our users in just a couple of minutes and I think uh, for us this was a really great uh, advance I think. so question time are we running, running out of time <coughs> okay so question time. have a, uh, an idea of networking other than the linking you mentioned. Uh, this is fine if you use like simple applications. If, if you're using cluster applications that are like aware, where the cluster nodes are aware of each other uh, via some gossip or something. For example, Zookeeper, Kafka, Hadoop, uh, that can be a bit problematic. Have you run into any of those problems? I guess it could appear with like HA versions of JBoss. And if yes, how did you address them? So we didn't have uh, really those uh, types of issues. So the question was, um, is, is the networking provided by Docker enough? And I would say it is, because, but, but um, because it's really... Okay, I didn't show this in the images, but, but, but we have, we have uh, other um, dependencies that are other machines really physical machines and, and uh, as well in the test scenario but they are read only so uh, we are able to access other machines from uh, uh, on the network from inside the docking containers that, that's no issue um, network discovery and stuff like that then you would have to, to work a little bit more but, uh, but as, um, as I said docking really builds on uh, Linux uh, I mean Linux containers, so you can do every with everything you can do with a normal LXC container within Docker. Docker is more of a convenience layer; it doesn't stop you 